Um, thank you everyone for joining our session today regarding uh, SAP and the business processes. So um, today's talk will be more about uh, what comes next after some of the compromises in SAP system. And uh, we'll have our basic introduction about SAP. We have uh, audience watching from the in internet as well. So we'll have an exploit demo and then we'll talk about the payment processes in the SAP systems and uh, the attacks uh, relevant to them. So uh, the screen is clear, right? Okay. So here we have a Twitter account, okay? Um, if you just look at the tweets a little bit, you may f find them a little bit odd. So we have subsystem ID, HRP, card approved, then the name, then credit card numbers, their CVV codes, and the expiration dates. So how did we get to there? This talk is about this. Um, first, we'll start with the business processes. Um, I mean, uh, this is the fourth talk, I think, uh, today about SAP security. So here in this track, we all know very well uh, how SAP maps to the business processes. So especially the ERP um, is the dominating system right now. So wherever you go, you'll be finding more and more SAP systems. And uh, this is the core of the major businesses, major enterprises. Attacking the core is not that difficult. First of all, the complexity is the biggest issue. Second, if you little, work a little bit in IT, you know the moment you try customizing and hardening certain things, they fail and they cause more issues. So when the systems run fine, people tend to avoid touching to these systems. More to that, there are third party components in the uh, SAP landscape. So it's not about SAP's code, it's not about uh, what Andreas mentioned with the custom code the customers are uh, developing. There are also third party add ons to the SAP systems. I put it there because I had a table fail situation where everything just ran on, uh, onto each other. Anyways, um, the attack vectors to SAP systems are in certain common pillars, authentication, user authorizations, etc. And when we look at the SAP systems, the old school exploits almost work everywhere, at least with a single instance. Let's say default testers, the company has all the compliance rules, guidelines, it doesn't exist anywhere, just one development system. So what happens is, in the SAP world, since the systems are tightly interconnected, just using a single exploit, it is possible to jump from a single system to other ones. So this can be the default passwords, uh, SSO, the PSE files in the SAP systems, it can be other parts relevant to ABAP code security, at the end, if an attacker exploits one SAP system in the landscape, it is very simple to jump to uh, other systems. And just, uh, <clears throat> just one thing about the non-production systems. When we look at these systems and compare the passwords and user accounts in non-productive systems versus production systems, there are a lot of users which have the identical username and password in both of the systems. So, hack a sandbox system or dev system, run an offline password cracking tool, and then you have very good chance of jumping to a production system in the same landscape. So, how can the SAP systems uh, be attacked using the third party components? Um, one example we find almost on uh, all ERP systems is uh, the Ixus components. This is a widely used document management system from OpenText Ixus. And um, we have discovered an ABAP code injection vulnerability, which is uh, actually using an RFC function without any special authorization checks. So it means if somebody is able to 
access to this function on the core ERP system in the production landscape, uh, they can pretty much do everything. So the bad part of the story is SAP has done a uh, remarkable effort in introducing the monthly patch day, but these third party components Usually when we communicate with the owners uh, of the software vendors who produce these software, uh, we notice that they don't even have any sort of security processes. So in this case, when we tried to contact the OpenText Ixus, it took us a couple of months where we got to a point where we explained that there is a security issue in their software. So they, they didn't have anybody uh, real which they could uh, direct to us uh, immediately. <coughs> The core components. Um, today there were numerous vulnerabilities pr presented regarding uh, core components. I just want to give an uh, example um, to one uh, vulnerability which got patched uh, after two years of communication. So initially when this was patched, the risk rating coming from SAP was actually 6.0. So this was the uh, CVVS core. And what does this exploit do? It basically allows running operating system commands on the remote system with the application service users. So it's pretty much the full compromise. Then uh, SAP released the patch and we noticed that it is possible to bypass this patch. So same, for the same vulnerability a couple of months later, three, four months later, there was not another patch. But now this patch was magically uh, attributed to risk of 7.5. So it means when you get the information about certain vulnerabilities in the SAP system, you should always uh, do your own risk assessment. And there the uh, independent researchers also provide a lot of information. So you should always hear uh, what the external say about these kind of vulnerabilities as well. Um, another topic was the sub-GRC. Uh, it is used for the centralized authentication authorizations controls, uh, sorry, authorization controls. And uh, last November or December, SAP released uh, a patch for multiple vulnerabilities in GRC, which we reported. So that the risk rating was 8.5. But the interesting thing was it was released after more than uh, one and a half years where we communicated this to SAP. So imagine you have a security software installed on your core systems and it is vulnerable for uh, more than one and a half years. <coughs> so uh, let's do a basic demo and then we'll jump to the uh, business processes. All right, here we have two virtual machines. One is the attacker's workstation, that will be us, and then we have the poor uh, SAP system. So basically, um, in the SAP system, we have our users, of course. We have, let's say, our administrator users. I don't know whether you can see it. Let me zoom a little bit. So this is the user master record in the SAP system, where it displays the hash codes of the users. So here we have an admin, you see it has a uh, password hash, and uh, now we are jumping uh, to the attacker's workstation. So here on the attacker's workstation, we are running uh, a software called the uh, ESNC Security Suite. This is something we use for penetration testing SAP systems. And here we are looking uh, at an ex exploit which is relevant to the core basis uh, above code in the SAP system. So maybe this was the reason why SAP attributed the uh, vulnerability as 6.0, because when we run the operating system command, we don't get a response back. So you can say, hey, you cannot steal data or do anything because you send the command, but you don't say anything. But I mean, I'm just speculating. Maybe this was the idea dash for giving it a medium rating. Uh, so basically, if we send a command there, all 
of course now we will wait for this to indefinitely exit. Let me just terminate this. So here, um, I hope I didn't accidentally kill some SAP process, but okay. So here, let's, let's look at the hash code of the system. I'm just gonna make this smaller. So you see here it starts with nine, six something, okay? And uh, here I'm just running a command, which is actually uh, just use a call to uh, update the password hash of the user in the database. So if I send this to the SAP system, and there should be, just one second. Is this the word wrapping? Okay. Ah, okay, good. So if this works fine, let's see whether we get the demo effect. Uh, I'm just running this. You see that the hash updated from 96 something to C2 something. This is actually a password that we know. So at this moment from the attacker's workstation, we can just uh, log into the system with the password that we know. And this is something very simple, of course. So this is how SAP systems get compromised one of the uh, many ways to comp compromise the CP systems. Um, so, so now we'll jump to something different. Um, we'll talk about the business processes. So this is where actually, uh, this is the part which matters for the business. Basically a business process, I mean, maybe some of you know already the pin factory example from the Adam Smith. Basically it says, if you have a pin factory, instead of a person producing the pins from scratch, if you just divide the labor to certain functionality and allow people to get specialized, you can increase efficiency. And this is what happens with the uh, current businesses. So we are getting more and more specialized in certain aspects. So the business process is about fulfilling the requirements and needs of a customer, basically. And in our examples today, they are done with the SAP systems. So one attack to such business processes uh, after the systems are compromised uh, for extracting money is actually going and checking uh, what the vendor would actually do uh, for paying its invoices. So basically, we can go to the vendor payment history because imagine you're a large enterprise, you have to pay your uh, telecom invoices, I don't know, uh, insurance and other bulk uh, amounts every month. So the attacker can simply go to the uh, vendor, uh, the payment dues, and then just uh, go and filter these results to find a right value which the attacker would be interested in. So in this case, we put here the amounts less than minus 10,000, which means we are looking at the cases where the, van, the company will pay more than $10,000 uh, or euros, whatever the currency is. So based on the response, the attacker can choose a nice vendor as the target. These vendors are located in the vendor master record. So we have all of the information about the vendor, such as their bank account numbers. So at that point, it is simple for the attacker uh, to replace this bank account by first of all finding this vendor and then changing it. And then certain cases, there will be a requirement for a second approval. When the attacker has the admin rights, it can just impersonate another user and approve this request as well. So at the end, what we have is there will be a payment run. The amounts, I don't know, in this case, 700,000 euros will be transferred to an account. And then the last resort is uh, the bank number in the SAP system. 
And when we talk to customers, we ask, okay, do you have additional controls there? And sometimes we get the response that we expect the bank to have some more controls. So if you are left to the, uh, I don't know, goodwill of the bank uh, for detecting a fraud, then you might be disappointed sometimes. Because imagine they're processing large amounts of uh, invoices all the time. And this is a one-shot kind of fraud scenario. So imagine the attacker sets up a nice company, tells the bank, says I'm expecting 1 million euro because I have done great business with a very large vendor, and then the money arrives. And this is less likely to create suspicion. So the attacker has a window of opportunity to, I don't know, fly to Bahamas or whatever. So here we see that the bank accounts gets changed and then uh, it gets applied to the system. So um, for the second part of our presentation, now we, first of all, we assume that the uh, attacker has sufficient authorizations to do whatever uh, it wants to do. So this part is clear, either an ABAP injection, OS command injection or another vulnerability or some other ways of manipulating the application service, the system gets compromised. So what can happen next? So let's talk about the uh, SAP and the credit cards. The credit card processing on SAP system, so payment card processing. Um, in SAP, there are a lot of business processes relevant to payment card processing. This can be customer orders, it can be a retail point of sale, it can be uh, travel reimbursements for HR. If you are traveling somewhere, coming to troopers, you go back, employee self-services, you enter your information to get the taxi bills and other stuff. Then this money gets transferred to you. So the SAP system holds information about uh, how it can transfer money to you. The cardholder data therefore passes through the SAP system and on many cases it is stored on the system. There are a lot of data tables which can contain this information or there are change documents or transaction logs or DB logs, etc. There is now a trend for the last five, ten years which is using the tokenization technology so that the least inf uh, amount of information is stored on these systems. <clears throat> um, when we looked at the SAP systems, we found more than 50 database tables which contain uh, payment card information, such as credit card numbers. This depends on which modules are active on the system, and of course what is activated there. Uh, and most common ones are the BSEC-C and the FPLTC. These tables usually contain this information. And for example, in the HR uh, master records, InfoTF 11, there's also information about the uh, payment card uh, data. And there are also external solutions like uh, the Paymetric solution, where there are also tables specific to that one where uh, encrypted or in clear text certain data is stored. <clears throat> so for the newbies uh, who, who are just uh, penetration testing SAP, um, after the right rights are obtained, the easiest way is of course using the SE16 transaction, which is uh, displaying the database uh, table contents relevant to SAP. <clears throat> so in this case, the attacker can just take one of these tables and then can also even filter them based on its criteria. Then the uh, credit card numbers are displayed there. I don't know whether it's visible that much, but yeah, good. So imagine somebody pastes this information to paste bin and then it leaks out. I mean, uh, the PCI DSS penalties are quite expensive. So. The SE16 is not the only possibility. There are also ways using the property 
RFC protocol or the swap RFC type of protocols for accessing SAP systems over the internet. And um, for doing this, there's actually a tool uh, that's called the Subsucker. And oddly enough, there is a bird called Subsucker. Uh, I don't know. I, it was just that we accidentally come up uh, with this bird. So, so we thought about bringing a free to tool for the pen testers, which is named after this bird. And this allows easy access to the uh, SAP tables via RFC and HTTPS protocols. So if you do a cross-site scripting uh, to a web application and then steal the MySAP SSO2 cookies, you can also use this for uh, running uh, RFC uh, connections or running HTTP, HTTPS connections and extracting credit card number data. So the persistent cross-site scripting uh, is of importance as well, since these cookies can be harvested. <clears throat> and of course, uh, we already have a lot of templates there for quickly accessing filtering data. Um, these are usually a lot of fun when we do PCI DSS type of uh, assessments on SAP systems. So, what about the encrypted credit card numbers on the system? PCI DSS clearly says cardholder data must be encrypted. And uh, there are tables like CCSEC, ENC, or um, PCI security row where these encrypted cardholder data is stored. In SAP, there is a tool called RS Repair Source. It is possible to use this to very quickly write a program which can decrypt these credit card numbers on the system. And when we focused on this, it took us some time to do that. Uh, there's the, the functions in the system, uh, C-card develop or uh, CC num decryption. These functions are great for decrypting these credit card numbers. And this is uh, for the paymetric solution XIP E4 crypto. So after we did it, we knew what we need to look for, then we search, are other people also doing the same thing? And the answer is yes. And uh, <laughs> they're also sharing their experiences. And they're sharing this on the SAP forum. So let, let me just read this out because I love this one. Hi experts, I'm using the CSECA decryption function module to decrypting card number inside loop for, to see full credit card number. It takes so much time. So the guy is decrypting, I don't know how many thousands of credit card numbers. In a function module for decrypting multiple card numbers at a time, it is very urgent. <laughs> so. <laughs> Mario Linkis gave me a very good answer. He said, look, okay, uh, why this was the case. Uh, I leave it up to your imagination, of course, most likely, there was some sort of a system upgrade or something, and they needed to do it. But I mean, I don't know. If, um, you give your verdict. So when we saw that, we were quite uh, amused by uh, how good certain things are documented in SAP. So the external payment card solutions. There are a lot of vendors there. Um, including Paymetric, GMA Pay, et cetera. Um, and when we look, all of these vendors are trying to come up with secure solutions. But at the end, this information goes through the SAP system or SAP system has a relevance. So if you have an insecure SAP platform plus a secure solution, the answer is not a secure solution, of course. Uh, most of these tools use the register server, uh, registered RFC servers, where uh, also our colleagues from Onapsis ha have shown some attacks on the T-Rex. So the standard concept is there's a registered server, which is uh, dispatching requests to the PCI server, and this PCI server, payment card interface server, is actually the interface to the merchant or to the bank. So. In this case, 
the SAP system can send uh, this kind of authorization information, credit card authorization information, uh, and also external applications can do the same. So in this standard concept, there are, of course, a lot of commonly done security issues. First of all, the customers do not configure the uh, regim for access control list. This is very common. Uh, another topic is this access control list can be bypassed because of a missing subkernel patch. This is also uh, sometimes the case. But what we see more and more is the customers are actually using SAP's tool, uh, which is the Regim for Access Control List Generator, to create access control lists for them because it's a tedious process. And this tool generates security configuration with access equals star, giving access uh, to the all uh, payment card interfaces. The last time we discussed this with SAP, I did not get the answer that uh, SAP acknowledges this as a security issue. Maybe something changed in the meantime. I don't know that. But for us, this allows us to extract credit card numbers. So uh, I don't know. Um, the topic we discussed, uh, I had a question about the T-Rex because there was like a TP name of the registered server where this uh, had like 14 uh, digit timestamp dash. And I just check how would it be possible to attack this and it appears that there's like 31.5 million seconds in a year, if I didn't miscalculate it. So it means if this system is configured uh, one year ago, you would need to brute force it this many times to really uh, guess the uh, TP name. And this would take quite a lot of time. In the payment card interfaces, this is not the case. They have the predictable uh, TP names. So you can quickly connect to it, run the settlement functions or other functions, and uh, exploit these systems. <clears throat> and of course, unauthenticated. So um, the CC authorization and CC settlement functions are the most critical functions for uh, payment cards. And in this case, the attacker uh, sends in the A uh, request to the PCI server over the SAP gateway, and then uses this to extract credit card information. So on cases where there is tokenization, um, the attacker can also pretend to be the PCI server as well, which means um, they can approve certain transactions. So imagine the attacker runs the um, in the middle attack from the local network, also from a distant network, uh, and then goes to the internet shop and purchases something. And then the request is dispatched to the uh, man in the middle server, and then the attacker can just approve this. So further, we have, discu we have discovered that the solutions such as sub PI, XI, uh, are configured in the wrong way where uh, things such as the logs are containing credit card information. Or we see cases where debugging is not switched off. It means the developers can also see credit card numbers. So the typical way of the external solutions where uh, you try to enter your credit card and before that the system redirects you to a secure web server is still flawed and it doesn't save you from uh, being excluded, uh, being included in the PCI DSS scope because you can manipulate the functions which are doing the dispatch to the secure web server. So it can be any web server as well. So tokenizing on its own is not sufficient. The SAP system must be uh, secure as well. So um, the standard concept results in uh, Man in the middle for the most critical functions, CC settlement and the CC uh, authorization. And this allows credit card data theft, fake transaction authorization, and it can have foreseeable, foreseeable consequences, and also some unforeseeable uh, consequences as well. And this part is interesting for us because uh, we got a little bit bored in working on the foreseeable consequences part. 
So, wherever I go, I mean, SAP related conferences, wherever I go, it's always like SAP should be more uh, focused on the social networking, social tools, whatever. So we said, okay, let's do it. So in the credit card world in the SAP, the STCC card, out call RFC, is an RFC dispatcher uh, which allows capturing the credit card numbers in real time. This includes the validation status and credit card number and all of the inf information about the uh, payment. So we introduced the tweet uh, BTTTM, uh, the first sub-credit card to Twitter interface. And this basically allows the system, the SAP system, the large ERP system, to tweet after a credit card transaction. This, of course, requires patching uh, SAP's code. So you probably won't get support for this. Uh, but I don't think that would be of concern anymore. And we have the uh, DNS tunneling as the fallback if Twitter doesn't work. So there's also this opportunity. Um, what were the challenges we had, first of all? Uh, Twitter changed its uh, API last year or more than a year ago, so HTTP is not allowed anymore. So this was the first, cha first challenge to do uh, HTTPS connections from, uh, from the ABAP stack, uh, because we had to improve uh, Twitter's uh, certificate to the system, and so there are uh, ways of uh, doing that with the subcan PSC. So uh, this was the first challenge. The second is somehow there's a delay one to three sec seconds per tweet. This is sometimes annoying if the system is processing a lot of information, of course. Uh, but the DNS tunneling is a very good alternative option because it is very simple using the RFC host to IP uh, function model in the SAP system. So you can just use the typical uh, host names for uh, for transferring this kind of information or building a command and control server. So we did this, of course, to prove that these are viable attacks. And um, based on this, we were able to really tamper the system, build a background, build a back background uh, process, and introduce a backdoor to the system. So this is the result of it, basically. So when this happens, Suddenly, you have a Twitter account which you can follow, and then it's great that you are getting the status of all the active transactions in the SAP system. And I mean, the DNS tunnel was the most uh, frustrating part for me because I would not expect an SAP server network to allow the DNS uh, tunnel to work properly. So actually, the name resolution shouldn't work, uh, so this shouldn't be possible. But this, but this was the case. So, so the next part, how do we stay secure? So, so what have we done so far? We found a way to compromise the system, one of many ways. Uh, we did the live demo of using the RFC for connecting to the system and gaining admin rights, even though we didn't have a uh, function where we could see the results, since SAP is very standard in uh, certain actions. Then after this, we were able to tamper certain payment card processing code and inject our backdoor. And with this, in our case, we did a little bit of more fun and connected the SAP system to the Twitter, where we got all the nice tweets uh, with the credit card information, securely transmitted to the Twitter, of course. So PCI TSS compliant, at least that part. So, all right. So how do we secure our SAP landscapes. The first, I mean, we really work with very large organizations and this is not about securing one or two SAP systems, it's about securing hundreds of SAP systems. And the number one item is always addressing the complete picture because it's not you can focus on just the authorizations or certain aspect of the SAP security. You need to really have the comprehensive overview of it. The Second part is implementing a holistic process to stay secure. And the focus is always on the prevention domain where uh, the companies run audit tools, security checks, hardening guidelines, and then try to prevent 
a system uh, from being compromised. But this is just one aspect of security. And in many fraud cases we analyze, we see that this is not sufficient. So there should be detection and response. I mean, especially for the sub-GRC case, uh, we released uh, our uh, immediate updates as soon as we discovered the zero days. So until SAP patched it one and a half years later, our customers were protected. And this detection and response uh, capability is very, very important also for securing the customer above course. Because until somebody fixes the vulnerabilities that you report them, and like Andreas mentioned today, it is thousands of vulnerabilities, it takes a lot of time. So the customers need a way of uh, having detection and response so that they can react when something fishy is going on. So the third recommendation, automating it. It doesn't scale to analyze systems uh, one by one, and especially with manual work. You will just burn your time endlessly and you will not accomplish much because every month more and more security vulnerabilities are released regarding SAP. So we're talking about automation, automating the scans, automating the compliance checks, about code corrections, and automating the real-time monitoring as well. So this and together uh, integrated uh, with the CM builds a safety net because there are so many issues as also other uh, researchers mentioned it is not economically feasible to patch these issues or fix these issues. So uh, about us uh, I'm representing ESNC GmbH we are a company from, from around Munich from Grunwald and um, I'm a security researcher with very long time focus on SAP. And uh, I was credit for more than 100 vulnerabilities uh, regarding uh, SAP systems. And I'm a lecturer uh, teaching uh, systems and network security. So um, this is the background I have here. So, <clears throat> so when we look at the security aspects of the uh, SAP systems. Another topic is the scalability. The moment the uh, senior management becomes aware of security issues, then the firefighting mode starts. And this is a very dangerous mode because if uh, this is not properly planned, then the, this spark uh, doesn't continue for very long and people lose their interest. So it's always good to focus on single sections of the SAP security as much as you can scale. So whether it's just the audit and assessment compliance or the above code security, all of them, it is just about scaling and scaling slowly and building something together with the hardening guidelines and application of these hardening guidelines to achieve uh, proper security. So um, thank you very much. It's, it's around five o'clock, I believe now, 4.30, whatever, I don't, uh, have time, but uh, I hope uh, after so many sessions uh, you are still alive. So if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. Questions? One. First, first time I have to run today, so. Hello, thank you for your presentation. I have a little question about, by the way, did you know, uh, did you understand, or maybe did you try to understand which algorithm used for encryption, uh, credit card number or something like that? Uh, yes, yes, we did also analyze how this is done in the background right now. It's not on the top of my head, uh, but uh, it is not uh, important anymore because SAP has standard functions to decrypt them. And now we see more and more external PCI interfaces where they're using uh, their own way of implementing cryptography. But none of these really matter because you really don't need to do it the hard way. You can just use the built-in functions because SAP has to decrypt them anyways. By the way, it's just because it's very interesting for, example, for me, for example. <laughs> we shall go okay. with you. Maybe Why is it interesting it? for you? <laughs> uh, it's, it's a little secret. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, interesting because you know maybe they use an insecure uh, parameter for encryption, or maybe they used a hardcore uh, key which used. Yeah, the I mean, right? Maybe they are using ECB. I mean, everything is possible that we didn't go that uh, further into uh, checking the underlying cryptogra cryptographic libraries. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Some more questions. By the way, I mean, like in movies, if you have like a pistol somewhere, it always <laughs> explodes. So I'm really looking at this thing to uh, fall down, but that didn't happen this time, so we are lucky. Um, if you have any questions, you can always uh, send us an email. I'll be very happy to answer. I'm not very good in Twitter, other than the part I did. The last time I tried to uh, send a tweet, they disabled my account because in five years I only tweeted, I don't know, six times or something. So, uh, but email is the fine way of communication, so you can always reach me. Okay, so Atuga, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we will see us back in 20 minutes. Five o'clock is the next slot. So thank you.